okay uh, till now we have seen the uh, pn junction and pn junction is called diet and now we will see how to solve the circuits using a pn junction so uh, this is my pn junction diet and a potential v is applied okay and of course we know that if this uh, b is positive then this uh, configuration is in forward bias region and when this v is negative it is in the reverse bias region for simplicity the you know the symbol for representing the pn junction diode is this one okay so this is uh, used to represent this pn junction okay this is the uh, basically the pn n side okay the naming used uh, for uh, representing these two terminal is this terminal is called anode and this terminal is called the cathode why it is called so because this this name has come from the vacuum tubes so initially before the introduction of this pn junction or the semiconductor base diode there used to be uh, vacuum tubes so which also has diodes so vacuum tube based diode used to look like something like this so there used to be this filament and there is this plate so this uh, filament uh, used to get heated and uh, you know the electrons used to get emitted like this and if i apply a positive potential here the electrons will get attracted towards this plate okay so if it is a positive v is applied as a result of which there used to be a flow of current in this direction okay so this is basically the cathode see so this is uh, emitting the electrons so this is called the cathode and this plate which uh, is uh, attracting or capturing the electrons that is emitted is called anode okay so uh, you know and of course the electrons are flowing in this direction but the current is flowing in this direction this is the flow of the current right and <coughs> the current flows from the anode to cathode so similarly here right so electrons or electrons flows in this direction and the current flows from the anode to cathode so that's why this name is given like this this is named as anode and this is name as cathode terminology uh, that was used for vacuum tubes is still used and of course if uh, i connect a negative potential here the electrons will not get attracted and of course the current will not flow if this is you know in reverse bias or it is minus b okay so okay this was why this anode and cathode terminology is used for a pn junction diode so now we have seen we had seen that the current flowing through this diode or okay or the pn junction let's call it as id right the id is given by id is equal to is e power vd by vt minus 1 where this vd is the potential difference across this diode so this is my positive vd and this is negative okay in the forward bias region and of course this equation is applicable for the reverse bias region as well and we know that vt is from the einstein equation which is kt by q okay so now if i try to plot this equation right uh, this characteristics of the equation of the diode it will look something like this initially my id will become very small when this vd is small but suddenly it will start rising exponentially and this rise is really very steep okay so <clears throat> this rise is really very steep okay and when it is in the reverse bias condition the current will be 
IS. Okay, so what happens is as I was mentioning in the previous discussion that this IS is of the order of lesser than 10 power minus 12 ampere. Okay, whereas this ID in the forward bias region may be in this scale, maybe in the milliamperes, okay, milliamperes or even ampere, and this scale is in the scale of pico ampere okay so basically this is a zoom version okay this is zoom scale so this y axis the negative y axis is scale so in most of the book you will see something like this showing that the uh, you know the is is this one okay this is my is the reverse saturation current okay and this is in the forward bias region and this is the reverse bias region Okay, now the question is what happens if I continue this reverse bias voltage if my VD is negative. So will the IS remains the same? Uh, the answer to this question is no. If this VD is really really negative, it's very high negative like beyond minus 50 volt, then what happens is, so let's, so this symbol means that my this negative x-axis is really long so if i continue this reverse bias you no know, uh, this one if i continue this uh, my vd to be negative so at around beyond or beyond my 50 right so it will become suddenly there will be a current in the opposite direction so this region is called the breakdown region So note that this breakdown doesn't mean that the diode has spoiled. Of course, if the current becomes too large in the negative direction, the diode can get burned out. But if it is not very large, you know, uh, this uh, breakdown region will not spoil the PN junction. It is just that the uh, operation of the diode is broken. So that's why it's called a breakdown. Okay. And the voltage at which this, you know, this uh, breakdown happens, okay, this is called the knee voltage, V minus ZK, okay. And uh, this is also sometimes called as the Jenner effect, okay. So we will uh, come to this point more when we'll talk about the rectifier circuit, which is one of uh, very important applications of the diode. And in fact, you will see that uh, by selecting a proper doping concentration of the PN junction, this VZ can be made close to 5 volt, right? Close to 5 volt or 7 volt, something like that. Very close, right? Uh, so, uh, what happens if we can make something like this? Even this phenomenon can be used for voltage regulation, okay? So, we will discuss about this breakdown region more in details. Uh, when we'll discuss about the rectifiers. Now we'll more focus on the uh, forward bias region, assuming that this BZK or, uh, you know, this is very high, like right? it's uh, beyond minus 50, minus 60, okay? So, yeah, so we will be focusing in this region operation of the diode. So this is my diode equation. Now, if I expand this term, it will look something like this. Okay, so as we know that this IS, as I was mentioning, that it will be lower than a pico ampere or it may be a nano ampere, right? So even if I consider it in the nano ampere, okay, and nano ampere, and this term, this exponential term will grow so high, so very fast, maybe after a voltage of around 0 0.6 volt, right? This will start steeply increasing, okay? and it will go in a milliampere range. So this will be in a milliampere range. So uh, the point is, if I am subtracting 10 power minus three with 10 power minus nine, so I can easily ignore this one, right? This, will be, this is very, very small, negligible compared to this 10 power minus three. So I can approximate this ID only with this expression. Therefore, ID can be easily approximated as is e power vd by vt so there is no wrong in this approximation because this is negligible 
most of the time we will be directly writing id is equal to you know is e power vd by vt okay with this conclusion let's try to see how to solve diode circuits so consider this simple diode circuit So this is my diode circuit, simple diode circuit, this is my resistance, this is the diode, of course I have no BD drop, which is this one, across this anode and the cathode, and uh, of course I, my, I'm applying a potential and let's call it to be VDD, okay. So I'm supposed to solve this diode circuit, I want to know what is the uh, current flowing through this uh, network I id of course the same current is going to flow through the diode as well as the resistance so let me call it as id so i need to find out this current id as well as the vd okay so let me write down the equations that i can have to solve this network so we know that the basic equation id is equal to is e power vd by vt so this is from the diode side from the resistance side, we know that from the Ohm's law, this is basically um, this VDD minus this VD by R will give my ID. Okay, so again, ID will be equal to VDD minus VD R. So here I have two equations: equation number one, equation number two. Okay. So here it, I have two equations and at the same time I have two unknowns. So this VD and ID, these are the two unknowns and these are two equations. So theoretically we can solve these uh, two equations and we can get the expression for ID and VD. But because I am having this exponential function here, it becomes really difficult to solve uh, using the traditional way so i need to have some more sophisticated way of solving this problem and of course here i am assuming that that this vd is uh, greater than 0 0.6 volt such that i can implement this approximation okay so now um, the simplest way to solve any kind of equation is using the uh, graphical technique so i can uh, plot this id versus vd this curve and I can plot this curve as well and wherever these two curves intersect will be my solution point. So let's try to see the graphical technique first. So if I plot my first equation it's going to look something like this. Of course I am plotting only in the forward bias region. Okay. And if I plot this second equation, I'm going to get a straight line, okay? And uh, this is going to intersect the y-axis, that means this id, this axis, uh, and in this case, the vd is zero, okay? So if I make this vd as zero, it's going to become vdd by r. And x-axis, it is going to intersect when this id is zero, uh, the VD is going to become VDD okay and of course this is my solution point okay okay so this is one way of solving this kind of problem but the problem is uh, to go for this kind of solution becomes really difficult when I have a complex circuit in this case the circuit is very simple I just have a simple resistor and a diode in series and we can solve using this graphical method. But whereas if I go for something uh, complex network, it is not possible to solve by this method, okay? So there are other ways of, uh, you know, solving this problem like the numerical methods or the iterative method. So in this technique, what is done is basically this is my uh, x-axis vd this is my y-axis id okay so if this is the solution point okay so <clears throat> basically 
you know uh, we will start by guessing with some initial point some guess point okay maybe this point and we will insert this value in these two equations and try to get next set of solutions of id and vd and it may go here so this is my one set of solution and uh, by using this equation we can go to the next set of solution okay and similarly again using the value here i can go to a next set of solution and go to a solution which is closer to this my desired solution and similarly it will go something like this okay so this kind of technique of solving you know this kind of equation where we are not able to get a close form solution of vd and id you know this kind of uh, this is one of the method numerical method or iterative method so it is a very standard practice in mathematics okay and um, and there is a very nice example in the cetera smith book uh, for this method uh, example 4.4 of the 7th edition of the cetera smith covers this uh, so please try to go through this example yeah so it covers the uh, numerical method or the iterative method but this method also becomes really difficult when the circuit is complex okay so we want to go for something a uh, simpler approach so this leads to a uh, constant drop model so let's try to understand what is the constant drop model of a diode so if you see the forward bias characteristics of the diode so it is something like this so after 0 0.6 volt the current is going to rise exponentially okay so this is something like this so after 0 0.6 volt and this is going to remain uh, you know under 0 0.8 volt okay um, between 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 volt okay so what i can do is i can approximate this whole curve by a straight line which is starting or which is at 0 0.7 volt okay and this will make our life really very simple okay so this is a constant drop model Basically, what I have done is I have approximated this whole uh, curve, the exponential curve, with a simple, you know, seven volt drop. Okay, so this is uh, that uh, what I'll be using. But then one may ask, oh, this is a too rough approximation. But I'll be showing you and I'll be demonstrating you that this really works. Okay, so I'll be showing you example in LT Spice. Uh, how that this constant drop model even though it is very much approximate we can get the approximate results using this model and of course if you want to get the exact model there are many spy simulators which can help us to co solve the complex network and get the exact values but whatever we'll get from this constant drop model this result is also going to become very close with the exact values so I'll be demonstrating this one to you eventually. So now with this, if I have a diode something like this, if I diode something like this in my network, and if it is in a forest bias, I can easily replace with a simple voltage source of 0 0.7 volt. So my VD is equal to 0 0.7 volt, okay? so this is plus minus of course this is not providing any current but you see like uh, what it means is that there will be a potential drop of 0 0.7 volt okay so this is the constant drop model for example let's consider this example and give some values and try to find out the current id find id right find id uh, in the following example let's consider this r to be 1 kilo ohms and the vd to be 5 volt and you're supposed to find out id so what i need to do is i need to replace this whole thing with a constant drop of 0 0.7 volt let's copy this diagram and replace this one with a 
constant volt is of 0 0.7 volt okay so therefore my current id is going to become you know vdd minus the 0 0.7 volt by r this is 1 kilo ohms so it is basically 5 minus 0 0.7 by 1 kilo ohms so which is 4.3 milliampere okay so this becomes a very simple problem if i just re replace this diode with a simple voltage source of 0 0.7 volt now the question is is it accurate okay so to answer this question let me give a very simple example so imagine you are going to a market okay imagine you are giving someone to go to a market or a grocery shop and buy four items you are asking him to buy sugar one kilo of sugar this is item number one one kilo of rice and one kilo of almonds so the condition may be that uh, you have to give him some optimized money and you know you want to give him some money such that he can buy the stuffs okay and uh, based on your previous information you know that the sugar may be approximately maybe 70 80 rupees a kilo per kg and you know the rice may be around rupees 50 per kg and the almonds we know that this is costly so it may be around 900 rupees per kilo okay but of course uh, the price fluctuates every day so you may not know the exact value okay so you just know from your first experience that these are the you know uh, these are the values okay so what we will do is what we will do is basically we will uh, take maybe if we add it how much it's coming it's coming around rupees so it's coming around this value so generally we will give maybe some you know maybe a little higher amount 1100 and uh, we'll give to the person and ask him to buy it and if he goes to the shop he may see that okay this is not uh, this much this is maybe 65 rupees per kilo and the rice may be not 50 maybe a little higher rupees 60 per kilo and uh, the almonds also is little higher maybe it is maybe 920 rupees per kilo okay so <clears throat> now if you see if you see now the value is the ex actual value is and the actual value is 1045 okay this was your estimated but then you have made it you have little bit increased to 1100 rupees and the actual value is 1045 and you can see that there is not much different so this is like this one so the value that we have estimated is from the approximate model and the exact value that we are getting is from maybe from the spice or the circuit simulators okay but if you don't know how to do the approximation it will be very difficult to do the budgeting okay so suppose if you don't know the market price and you are assuming that instead of you know instead of in, if you don't know the market price of the sugar and if you assume that okay this is 100 rupees rice is also 100 rupees and almonds is also 100 rupees and your estimate value is how much rupees 300 okay and of course even if you give double the amount or even triple the amount okay i am taking triple the amount still you will not be able to achieve the actual value because we don't know how to estimate it so that's why sometimes approximation is very much required if you want to do the budgeting and even to do approximation we should have a good theoretical knowledge so here also in this case in this example we should know what is the approximate market value even if you want to do the estimation so same principle works when we are doing the approximation in the circuit okay this was an example in a very layman terms so let me give you a more uh, complicated example and we are going to solve it and you know and we will see that how this result matches or is very close to the actual result in the spy simulator Okay, so I have here two diodes. 
T1 and D2 okay and let this voltage source be 20 volt okay let's call it as PDD and this is R1 is equal to 3.3 kilo ohms and this R2 is 5.6 kilo ohms okay so here I'm supposed to find out the current through this resistance I1 the current through this resistance I2 and of course the current through this diode ID2 and of course uh, the I1 and ID1s are same so I'm just uh, supposed to find out this I1, I2 and ID2. So yeah, so we can replace all this diode with a you know simple 0 0.7 volt drop. Okay, so if I consider this uh, 0 0.7 volt drop, okay, plus and minus, you don't have to draw every time. Okay, if you are not comfortable initially, you can just you know. Uh, you can draw it, but if you are comfortable, you don't have to draw. So it is 0 0.7 across this diode D2. And if you see, uh, this drop across this diode D2 is same as the drop across this R1. Okay, the voltage drop, right? And we know that you can use the Ohm's law for this R1. So for R1, we know that, you know, I1, R1 is equal to this diode drop, okay, which is 0 0.7 volt, okay. So, implies my I1 will be equal to 0 0.7 by 3.3 kilo, which is equal to 0 0.212 milliampere. Okay, yes, so I have got my I1, which is really simple. So, let's consider this case of I2. So, let's solve the KVL in this loop. Okay, so <clears throat> here I have a diode drop of again. Uh, 0 0.7 here I have again diode drop of 0 0.7 and the drop across this R2 is I2 into R2 so therefore VDD minus this VD1 minus VD2 minus I2 into R2 is equal to 0 okay so which implies my I2 is going to become VDD minus VD1 minus VD2 by R2 and we know that VD1 VD2 is 0 0.7 volt and VDD is 20 so 20 minus 0 0.7 minus 0 0.7 by 5.6 kilo ohms is equal to 3.32 milliampere okay Okay, so I have got my I2. Now you can use a simple KCL and find out ID2. So if you see here, this I2 is summation of this I1 and ID2. Since I2 is summation of ID2 plus I1, implies my ID2 is equal to I2 minus I1. And since I know I1 and I2, I can subtract it and it is 3. 1 1 milliampere so finally if I write down the answer my I1 is equal to 0 0.212 milliampere my I2 is equal to 3.32 milliampere and my ID2 is equal to 3.11 milliampere so these are the three answers that I got by using the uh, approximate model which is the constant drop model so let's try to implement this circuit in the LT spines and see that the or result is quite close to the one that we have got from this approximate model so uh, this is my LT spines those who are new to the LT spines they can uh, go to the analog devices website and download it uh, you have version for Windows as well as Mac OS. So once you install it, this is how it looks like. So you can go here and you know open a new schematic editor and go here and get the components. So diodes, you can get it here. D I O D E. So you can just type diode 
and we get here okay so this is my diet and to rotate this one you can press ctrl r to flip you can use um, uh, ctrl e and again you can rotate here so what happens is as soon as you select a particular component this component will be always attached to the cursor so uh, you can just place it and then press escape to get rid of this attachment and you can get a resistance again go to this components and get a resistance res and again control r this is my resistance one resistance two okay and again go to the component type voltage your lpg and you can connect here okay all my components requirements are ready so if you can see here all the uh, components we have placed now we need to connect the wires so to do the connection you can just uh, go here this is a wire okay you can hover around the mouse you can see that this is where and you can select this one you can connect from one node to the other node the good thing about the LG Spice is that even if you just run through the components, uh, it will not be shorting them because it will understand that this is a component and I just need to connect the terminal. So, yeah. And of course, we need to put a ground. So, let's put a ground here, maybe. It is mandatory to put a ground, otherwise, the simulation will not uh, work. It's just a reference. You can put here also, doesn't matter. Uh, ultimately we need to find out the potential difference and the current okay so now okay let's put the values so right click here and the DC value we can make it as 20 so it will be in volts okay so okay yeah this is 20 volts and this resistance we know that it is 3.3 K so this is will be in ohms see here you can see here this ohms is written here so it will be in ohms so okay and just again right click here and write 5.6 k so it doesn't matter whether you are writing small letter or capital letter k because the spice is case insensitive okay okay so now for a diode just right click here and pick a proper diode so we will be using this diode 1 and 4148 from the on semiconductor okay this is the manufacturer company okay and just click okay and similarly for this also we'll select the same diode okay so now we are almost ready the circuit is ready uh, for doing the simulation so we will be doing the dc operating point simulation so dc operating point simulation is a simulation steady state dc voltages as well as the current at time t equal to infinity or at very very long time after the initialization so that is used for doing the operating point analysis or the DC analysis. So to go, to, so to do the analysis, go to here. You'll see the spice directive. Okay, you can right click here. Help me edit analysis command and DC operating point analysis here. Click here. So dot op has come. Click OK and just place this uh, in uh, place this dot op this spice directive in this window so we are ready for, for doing the simulation save it and run the simulation so if you run the simulation of course it is showing the different node voltages this is fine but we are more focused on the currents so you can see here the value that we got right uh, from the spice the IR1, the current flowing through the resistance R1 is, um, you know, 0.19 milliampere and we have got here as 0.2, okay, 0.212 by the approximate model and the actual is 0.19. So it's not very much uh, difference is there and if you see the ID2 is 3.11 and in this case is 3.14 milliampere, okay. This value that is given in the LG Spice is in amperes. So if you convert into milliamperes, it's 3.14. Similarly, the I2 is uh, 3.32 milliampere from the approximate model. 
and if you see here this IR2 is uh, 3.34 from the um, uh, spice simulation so again this is also not very much difference okay and also you can see the if you see the voltage drop you can see yourself that and if you see the voltage drop also you will see that the approximated voltage drop across these uh, diodes is around 0 0.7 so we can find out the you know drop across the diode as well but here the net is named as N001, N002, N003 because this is named by the spy so it becomes difficult which node it is representing. So let's level this nodes, okay, this node and this node. Uh, so to level the net you can go here and level the net. So let's call it as N1 and N2 and this is N3. So, and again, run the simulation. So, yeah. So, if you see the difference between N1 and N2, right? So, it is 20 minus 19.35. Uh, so, it is approximately uh, 0.7. Okay, little lesser than 0.7. That's fine. Uh, similarly, if you see the N2 minus N3, right? 19.35 minus 18.72. 19.35. 35 minus 18.72 so it is approximately 0 0.63 okay so it is close to I should say that um, 0.7 okay yeah so the conclusion of this discussion is that yes the approximate model or the uh, constant drop model is very uh, rough but at the same time, the results that we are getting is close to the actual value that we have got in the SPICE simulation.